Welcome, I'm Carl Tate. We're now gonna to shift to looking at plate tectonics as seen in the deep earth. Up till now, our focus has been mostly on observations made at the surface. And in the last few talks, we've been seeing the use for cross sections looking down in the earth. Benioff zones, even with seafloor spreading. We now shift to looking at these views below the earth's surface. These diagrams are interpretations based on a variety of different data, including three-dimensional seismic images of the Earth's interior. We won't discuss yet how those are made, but the information we see are partly informed by seismic observations. Most of the interpretations have to do with things going up or down, and as a result, the plate tectonic settings that are featured here are subduction and seafloor spreading, less so than things moving side by side. Here's our starting point, looking at the bathymetry and topography and plate boundaries in Alaska. There's a lot of complexity here, a lot of variety. Here's Fairbanks right in here, these high mountain ranges of North America. We can see volcanic arc with the bathymetry, lots of variations in crust. There's a lot of interesting things to look at that we've come to recognize. So with all that complexity on the surface, you know, here we have Pacific plate created at the Juan de Fuca Ridge. We have, can see these hot spot tracks of volcanoes and the subduction then along the Aleutian Alaska Trench. But the real question is what lies beneath? What's going on down there? What's causing all of this? We've seen a little of this in the form of the Benioff zones, for example, giving direct picture of this Pacific plate going down under. And here's a representation of that. So we have the Pacific plate here, subducting under the North America plate, these really large mega thrust earthquakes, magnitude nine even along here form on this contact, while the volcanic arc also is aligned and forms above the Pacific downgoing plate. So you'd have right lateral strike slip motion along the Fairweather Queen Charlotte Fault where this would be North America over here, and this would be the Pacific plate. So this is a great view to kind of think about Alaska and the different plate boundaries, even, even the collision zone. Here's a generic picture of a subduction zone system showing some of the components of the volcanic arc. This is called in front of the arc, the fore arc, the trench, the deep part of the sea floor, sediments, here we have the mantle lithosphere. It's on top of the asthenosphere. So this rigid part of the plate, this would be the, the oceanic crust, this thin portion. And then here we have the um, continental crust, the mantle lithosphere, and some of the plumbing underneath the volcano. So this is kind of our generic picture of a subduction system. And we will be, you know, looking at the components of this for Alaska. We'll return to that at the end. But the point is, is that cross-section views of the Earth's interior have always been important for understanding dynamic or moving processes such as plate tectonics, including mantle convection, seafloor spreading, plume upwellings, and subducting slabs. So we really need this perspective to understand what we see at the surface. And here's an example, 1963, this was in the really the seminal time period for understanding plate tectonics. This 1963 paper where Wilson is proposing that there's convection in the mantle and that the formation of certain spots, what we call the hot spots, are fixed. And as the plate moves on top, you get this tract of, vol of volcanoes. So here's the active volcano, the older volcanoes of the hotspot tract. And in plan view, you have, this could be Hawaii, you know, the active port solid here and the eroding older um, ancient volcanoes moving with the plate away from the hot spot. So this basic picture was come out even in 1963, you can see the need for looking at depth to understand these processes that we see at the surface. And it's this picture at the left that is such a challenging and open to a lot of interpretations upwelling at the ridges to form new plates, and yet these hot spots are sort of a different part of related to plate motion relative to these fixed sources. 
Another one we had seen earlier was related to this Cobb hotspot on the Pacific plate, but we don't need to revisit all the details, but the point is to see that 8 million, 6, 4, 2, 0 million years ago, there's this hotspot that's fixed, and the spreading ridge between Pacific and Juan de Fuca is itself moving relative to the hotspot. And so you have this hotspot track, but you also have the current situation today where this particular hotspot is actually aligned um, with the spreading ridge. But the point here is that it's this depth cross section, granted this is now 1990 where things are well established, but it's this picture that really gives us a better picture of trying to understand how we have you know, an age progression of, of seamounts or volcanoes at the surface um, relative to uh, the, the configuration of this fixed hotspot. Here's a picture, a, a graphic from a publication related to the Yellowstone hotspot, just trying to convey, again, we have these basic structure of the earth. This is not to scale, but you have sort of 35 kilometers um, crust. You have a lithosphere, might be 100 kilometers where the plate is moving on top of this asthenosphere. But the focus here is these upwelling, these plumes of material that are happening in addition to large scale convection cells that are thought to kind of drive or move, um, help move the plates. There are points that provide upwelling of material beneath these hotspots, whether they're coming from halfway down the mantle or all the way down at the core mantle boundary. Um, this is a subject of debate. Here's another picture. This is a interpretation from a paper on mantle dynamics and trying to pull together, you know, not only this once rigid plates subduct into the mantle, some of them kind of do not plummet that deep into the mantle and others go all the way down into what is known as a slab graveyard. And so this cartoon is tries to encapsulates the different length scales and processes and really options that are available for both plates going down and small materials, um, small plumes or large super plumes coming up from this core mantle boundary region. So a lot of imagination at this point, but it's underlain by considerable amount of data that we collect at the surface and also um, that we image with seismology in the deep surface. Here's a recent view of, of this behavior. Again, looking at, here's the core, and here are these cartoons of plumes and different things. Plume might hit certain boundaries and then shoot a smaller portion up to form, you know, at the, at the hot spot as this plate at the top moves, you might have a tract of volcanoes. Here's an example of a subduction zone. You know, the Benioff zone might extend, the earthquakes extend down to 600, 700 kilometers. Um, but the question is what happens to the slab after that? Just because there's no earthquakes that illuminate below 700 kilometers doesn't mean that the slab doesn't extend deeper down. So here's the depiction of a slab going quite deep and kind of getting mixed and partitioned into pieces as it gets reworked deep down in the earth, it gets warmed up and reworked and could material kind of gets recycled. So the main takeaway here is it's complicated, but there's a sense of convection, upwelling, downwelling of plate material and recycling. This process is kind of a rejuvenating material uh, to have new life at the seafloor or through hotspot volcanoes. Here's a computer, complex computer simulations of convection within the Earth's mantle. These reveal, these can actually, you know, show in a physics and computationally coherent picture that you can um, get these narrow upwellings of plumes. It's kind of hard to see what you're looking at, but it conveys this red core mantle boundary. There's large materials coming off it, and then off that larger upwelling, you have these narrower fingers shooting out, and that could be a, a, a possibility for how we get these kinds of hot spots that are relatively fixed with respect to the deep earth, while the plate the outer shell moves on top. So many hotspots are above plumes that originate deep in the Earth's mantle. So just because there is a hotspot visible at the surface in the form of a tract 
of, of active volcano with attractive volcanoes pointing toward older ones, you know, going away such as Hawaii or Cobb or Bowie or Yellowstone. Um, these authors have gone through and looked at other evidence of geochemistry, data of the rocks, and also seismic evidence, looking at images of the plumes to determine kind of qualitatively which ones are most likely to come from deep sources. So this is stepping from information at the surface identifying a hotspot to something much deeper in the earth about where are these coming from? How deep in the earth? Is it hundreds to thousands of kilometers down? So you can see a lot of green dots in the Pacific suggest that in the Pacific, a lot of these are coming from deep sources and that's not, not, not the case for, for all of them. So carrying on with this theme of understanding information at the surface with an interpretation of what things look like in cross section or at depth, we see here, this is, uh, seafloor spreading, where we have a spreading ridge, and the color here is the depth or the bathymetry. So the higher, sort of higher elevation material would be the reds, and the lower elevation, deeper seafloor would be in the blues. And what we can see here is the spreading shown in this red. This is the transform fault where we have a step between two ridge segments. We have an active strike slip relative motion. And so this would be the plate boundary as well. And then here's North America plate shown here. So spreading is occurring across these boundaries. And this is considered a slow spreading ridge. And this shows the author's view, see two kilometers, four kilometers, six kilometers, and this is kind of an exaggerated version. If you see the top scale was 30 kilometers, where you get a sense of the picture of based on the information at the surface, the bathymetry, how do we think you know, this uh, oceanic crust is being formed in, at these spreading ridges? And so this shows an example for a slow spreading ridge in contrast with the next one. So this shows an example for Pacific and Cocos, a fast spreading ridge. And so again here, this would be the spreading ridge shown here. And we can see that the characteristics of this ridge are such that the highest, the ridge really is right along the center. The highest elevation subsea ridge is right along the center here. And as you go away, we can see that this kind of goes down. So as things are going fast, this buoyant hot material pushes upward and creates a relatively high ridge along the spreading ridge. Again, keep, keep your eyes on depth, two, four, six kilometers. So we have this very thin crust forming right at the ridge and thickening as things go away and cools with time. The view on Hawaii is shown here, a very nice depiction of the Hawaiian hotspot chain immediately with a cross-sectional view that really ties in a lot of the things we've been emphasizing, but shows it in just a really nice way. And so we'll focus in on this versus this in the next two slides. So here's our, it's got the motion of the Pacific plate, the hotspot, Loihi volcano, Kilauea, these eruptions happening right here. We would think of that as the hotspot and that the dormant portions that once used to be above the hotspot or have since over thousands and millions of years are moving away from the hotspot and are no longer erupting. So all the activity is situating right here as this Pacific plate moves to the Northwest. And here's that view. This is sort of the essence view, you know, a much more expanded version of what basically Wilson was trying to show in 1963. There's some upwelling of material. The Pacific plate is moving toward the Northwest as shown here. And this shows the ages of the um, rock that was formed. So zero million years ago, Kilauea, Loihi, these are forming right now. When we see an eruption, that rock is zero million years old. And so we see this is at the front of the hotspot. And as you go away, Maui, 1.3 million, Oahu, 3.4, and so on. This shows you that the ages of these islands were you know, 5 million years ago. So if we go back in time, we would have to push this Pacific plate to the right and 
five million years back in time, this island, these islands here were right on top of the hotspot forming. Moving into the future, Hawaii Island is going to eventually become dormant, and Loihi or whatever comes next will be the next volcano in the Hawaiian Islands. It's a really cool picture to think about, um, and this would apply to all of these um, hotspot island arcs, most of which, many of which are not emerging above the sea level, but um, some of them, like Hawaii, are well known. So come back to this generic picture of this subduction of oceanic plate here beneath a continental plate. And as we shift toward thinking about Alaska, we look at this generic picture and think, well, what are the components um, in Alaska? And so we could put some names. We could say this is Southern Alaska, where we have, it's the Pacific plate going underneath the North America plate. This could be readout volcano that can be visible from the Kenai Peninsula looking out from, say, Homer. Um, and this could be the 1964 9.2 Alaska earthquake. This might be the Cook Inlet Four Arc Basin, which um, is the source of oil and gas discovery in Alaska, for example, and also the source of strong shaking during earthquakes. So as we look at this generic picture, we want to apply the things here toward Alaska. Takeaway topics. Plate tectonics is a surface expression of deeper processes such as mantle convection, which involves upwelling of hot material at mid-ocean ridges and downwelling of cold slabs at subduction zones. Mantle plumes, that is hot upwelling material, originate deep in the mantle and form hotspot volcanoes at the surface. 